Hey guys, welcome to our fish video. So today we're gonna to be talking about different types of fish, which are of course part of our vertebrates. So our first class of fish that we're gonna focus on is Agnatha. Now Agnatha are jawless, jawless fish, meaning they don't have a jaw. A and Agnatha means no, and nath means jaw. So again, the class name kind of represents what it is. Next up we have chondrichthys. Say it with me, chondrichthys. These are cartilaginous fish, meaning they have cartilage instead of a skeletal bone structure. These are fish like sharks and rays. So our chondrichthys showed up on Earth about 450 million years ago, and um, the cartilaginous fish we have today are both predators and then just harmless mollusk eaters, So and, unless you're a mollusk. Now some major characteristics of our chondrichthys are internal fertilization. Um, we also have them being mostly carnivores, but again, some of them are not. Um, they have paired pectoral fins, and they also have exposed gills, which you can see on the lovely drawing right here. Next up, we have our osteichthys, our bony fish. Uh, these are like bass and trout and carp. You can see from this lovely drawing, I should have been an artist, obviously. Um, so some major characteristics is that they have external fertilization. They have swim bladders. Swim bladder is a special organ that's gonna help with buoyancy. They also have an operculum, which is a special flap of skin that's gonna cover the gills. They also have um, some well-developed senses of smells and taste. Next up, let's talk about our gills. Now, our gills are a major respiratory structure in the fish. So the gills are going to be how um, oxygen-rich blood is going to get to all the tissues and how oxygen-poor blood can be oxygenated as water flows over the gills and um, the gills actually filter out what we don't need and take in the oxygen. As far as fish, fish digestion goes, there is huge diversity, but they do have complete digestion um, going from the mouth to the anus, but the tract depends on the feeding method. Now fish pee all the time and they don't have to worry about water loss, so they can excrete nitrogen as ammonia anywhere they want, and so that is their form of excretion. So the thing you'll have to remember about fish circulation is that it is a two-chambered heart and goes in a single loop throughout the uh, process. So blood collected from throughout the body is gonna enter a special thin chamber called the atrium. And then as the heart relaxes, the blood is gonna pass through a valve into the thick-walled muscular ventricle. You can see right here, then contraction of the ventricle forces the blood into the, the networks where um, in the gills, the gas exchange will occur. Then eventually the blood will return to the atrium. Now fish are what we call ectothermic, meaning they get their heat from the environment. Um, reptiles are also like this, and we are not like this, however. Now there's a lot of diversity as far as fish reproduction is concerned. You, we have uh, various methods. There's external fertilization, internal fertilization, and live birth. With our external fertilization, um, it can be either synchronous, meaning it happens at the same time both parents are involved. It can be sequential, meaning the eggs are laid and then the male comes later to fertilize the eggs. It really depends. Some fish even hold um, eggs in their mouth after fertilization. So again, we see extreme diversity with fish reproduction. So those were our three main classes of fish. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you tomorrow.